Oh, this is going to be so much fun. What do you hear this? Corey Pesatoro, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. And bringing the accordion. So yeah. let's start with how did you start playing the accordion? When, well, when did this happen and how? Well, my dad, uh, being coming from an you know, Italian family, he played accordion back when the accordion was very popular in the 50s. And uh, then he quit you know, when the rock and roll era kind of came in. And he took it out when I was about nine years old and said, hey, do you want to play accordion? And I always say... The I traditional was, accordion. Yeah, the traditional, right. Oh, yeah, the way before this. <laughs> this wasn't even thought of. Um, traditional acoustic accordion with reeds and everything. And uh, I was probably too young and dumb to think, why would I ever want to play the accordion? So I said, oh, okay, sure, you know. But then older, you know, you want to play guitar, you want to play drums and piano. Did I you said, take sure. piano at the same time? No, 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 I started, I know, I've realized it's a rare thing. I started on accordion and I've stayed on accordion. Usually if someone starts on accordion, they go to piano. Or if you start on piano, you go, oh, I want to play accordion. But I've just always stayed on accordion. Okay, so yeah. you pick it up around nine, mm -hmm. you horse yeah. around with it. Yeah. When does it start to look like you know what you're doing? Probably, I mean, 10? even in the first year, year and a half, <laughs> I mean, I felt like there was something there. By 11, I was starting to play gigs, and I had my first big gig at, at 12, and then... So. All right, this goes really, really fast. So you just know what you're doing. Mm. You just know chords. You're composing. Yeah, I love theory. I love theory. So that was a big thing. All right. By the time you're 12, mm -hmm. You're playing the White House? <laughs> yeah, yeah, late. Yeah. Tell me about this. How uh, did you get there? Well, I Under won, President Clinton. Under President Clinton, right. I won a national championship in my age group. It was down in New Orleans. And my uncle sent in the VHS, in those days, <laughs> to the White House. And they liked it, because they were having amateurs come in and play. And they said, yeah, yeah, we'd love to have you come down and do our Christmas event where we have different people play throughout Wait, the White House. Wait, we'd like you to come down and play our, our Christmas yeah, yeah, yeah. event? We're talking about the White House. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Things were easy, I guess, before. All right, so the parents <laughs> say what? Oh, no, of course. So, so me and my parents would go down, and um, they just had different people playing around the White House. And my dad kept saying, he's got to play over there, because he saw the president was behind a door. And president said, he's got yeah, to play there. So finally, he egged him on enough. All right, we'll play there. And sure enough, during a break, President Clinton said, who's that accordion guy playing? Bring him in. So I came in, and the rest is history. We hit it off. And now, President was, Clinton was a, it was a saxophone player and a right. big fan of jazz. Did yes. you play any jazz? I, I and I'm still working on that with him to do some kind of a duo thing with the accordion and the saxophone. So. All right, let's visit that just a second. Mm. You're still working with a former president to do something together in the future? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell oh, me yeah. a little no, bit about Well, this. we've kept in touch, and I've played with him from 10 more times since that first um, incident, and then, you know, we're trying to always work on maybe some little thing here and there, and, and who knows, as we were talking about in the near future, we may see some if more Hillary collaborations. If Hillary and Clinton yeah. runs for president, you could be <laughs> more back collaborations with the Clintons. Yeah. So just to be, just to be clear on this, mm -hmm. you pick this up at nine, mm -hmm. and you are let's call it a prodigy, okay? Let's call I guess it a little it later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you really you start moving on this, mm -hmm. and you start composing on what was your dad's accordion. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, I had, of course, a little 12 bass, which is much sure. smaller than this to start on. Sure. Um, you know, we have many accordions. Now, for some reason, accordion players always accumulate many accordions. Just like a guitar guys. person. Yeah, oh, yeah, okay. yeah, you never have one. You always have about 15. But, you know, I, I just kept doing some competitions here and there, but I was always trying to play gigs and start to get my name known a little bit. But I knew by, by 12, 13 that this is what I wanted to do. Most people uh, don't know what they want to right, do. Right, right. Everyone age. else is, what am I going to college for? I said, well, I know. So. You're from Rhode Island, we should say. You yes. end up at the New England Conservatory mm -hmm. of Music in Boston. Mm -hmm. What happens there? You start to fine-tune something mm -hmm. that's Corey's right. sound? Right, yeah. I guess that's a, actually a good way to say it. Because um, I, I went there, I was just getting into jazz. I always improvised, but kind of more in an accordion sense, and I was just getting into doing improvisation in a jazz style. When I went to NEC, the just... Everybody there was incredible, and the environment was as important as the faculty there. So just to be around all these amazing musicians, just asking questions mm -hmm. all the time, and, and trying to get rid of the handicap of accordion, that was the tough part, because everyone... You're trying to make it cool. Yeah, yeah, of course. Always trying to make it cool. You're a world <laughs> champion accordion player, acoustic mm -hmm. digital jazz. Mm -hmm. The first person to ever do that. Mm -hmm. You're only 26 now. Right. You did that by age when? Uh, 20. Four? Okay. Could you yeah, maybe yeah, move a little faster? <laughs> <laughs> so you've also been called—you've also been called a visionary and a rebel on this yes. instrument. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
This I, is not your usual accordion. No, one. it is. <laughs> Describe this before we play it. Why it looks like this, and what is it, and did you develop it? Well, I mean, it, it is. It's an electric accordion, which they've been out since really the late '60s. It was originally the Corda Box, which I'm sure some viewers will remember, um, when the accordion was trying to stay cool and become electric. But what's great about this is the bellows still work as a real accordion. So even though I'm playing electronic sounds, the bellows are still controlling it. So it really is a real accordion. Um, the skin on it, with all the flames and everything, I just, you know, I'm always trying to push the envelope. What's, what, who hasn't, you know, done this or that? And then there's lights, actually, in the grill. So that go along with the keys. So I'm just trying to always think, what has someone not done with an accordion? So. How much further can you push this envelope, do you think? Uh, I'm actually developing an entirely different shaped accordion to change the shape of it. Because as cool as it is, it's still, the accordion's a bit awkward as this big, you know, thing on you. So always trying to just think of something What different. kind of shape? Uh, that's still a little secret. You don't secret. want to say. Yeah, it's okay, still a little that's, secret. That's got to keep it mysterious. We should say you're a world traveler playing yeah, this. Right. Where, where have you been and played the accordion? Um, as, you, as you mentioned, maybe New Zealand, Japan, Tunisia, which we'll get into with, with Yasmin, mm -hmm. uh, France, Denmark, Finland, um, lots in Canada. I was just in Brazil. So it's, it's, I've gone to all the continents, except who, Antarctica. Who embraces <laughs> this kind of music the most? Your mm. new kind of music, not your basic polka. Who embraces the, the yeah, newer? Yeah, is, is, it, is it the Far East? Is it, who's, who is loving you when you're going out and playing? Uh, I mean, Europe definitely is, is loving it. Just because there's such a good accordion history there. You know, the United States, it's been kind of up and down. It's on an upswing now. But like in France, the accordion never died. It was, it's always been so huge. Italy is kind of like America. Everyone's always thought, oh, the accordion's big in Italy. No, it's kind of dead. Like not here. yet, anyway. Yeah, not yet, anyway. <laughs> Scandinavia, it's great. My generation knows about Lawrence Welk. You have some right. kind of connection there. What is it? Well, I know it's, it's funny that Lawrence Welk is looked at as kind of, you know, one of the reasons the accordion died, which is unfortunate <laughs> because Myron Florin, who was the accordion player on there, and Joanne Castle was the piano player, but also an amazing accordion player. They were great players. So it's unfortunate that it, they're kind of looked at, oh, that's the reason died. It's really because of the Lawrence Welk show and what it represented. And as kids were forced to watch the Lawrence Welk show, and they, they wanted to go out and play Beatles and everything like that. And the accordion was not involved in that. So Did you study of... under somebody on that show? No, but my first gig, as I said, the first big gig at 12 before the White House was I got to play in Rhode Island when the Lawrence Welk show came to the Warwick Tent. And I was supposed to do 10 minutes, and Myron Florin got sick. And they said, can you do a half hour instead of 10 minutes? You've got to sit in for Myron Florin. So that was my... Wait, again, you're 12. Yeah, yeah, I was at 12. Unbelievable. <laughs> All right, let's pick this baby up. Okay. And what I want you to do is do a range... Range of styles. Of stuff. Style. And I'm okay. just going to sit here and listen to this, because this is... You know, I've seen you on YouTube, and I love what you're doing with <laughs> So you just you do your thing. All right. Get it on. And you're right, it is cumbersome, so I can't wait to see a little, the shape. A little bit, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll, uh, yeah, I'll start with, as we were joking around with pokers, which this can still do, so let's do something that you might expect the accordion to do. As you'd hear on the Lawrence Walk Show. And then, you know, we can start getting into something that's uh, kind of strange. Let's see. And we can get a little weirder with this kind of thing. Uh, modern music, which I'll play something that I'm sure everybody would know. Now we're gonna we're gonna look at a video okay. here um, that we've taken off of YouTube with uh, your permission. Yes. <laughs> and this is in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and this is funk. So mm -hmm. let's take a look.
right, so you played with Chick Corea in L.A. Was this that particular, or this was just, tell me about that show in L.A. That was um, kind of a whole accordion concert. They had me and three other accordion And your performers. outfit was not lost on me either. Very hip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the all-white the all -white thing. The, the reason all-white actually comes is because with this accordion, you can't really wear anything but black or white, and everybody kind of, you know, black is normal. So I said, oh, let's just go white and do something crazy. And so uh, that's how white has. So ended. tell me about that concert now. Like, yeah, what, yeah. So there's four different accordion uh, players uh, and different bands and such. And I actually, it was a funny gig. I didn't know it was that size. It was a thousand people in front of this lake, and it was right in the middle of downtown LA. So I called the drummer I had just met the night before, and uh, we had kind of more of an accordion player like gig. And I said, hey, want to do this thing on stage, and we'll just figure it out before we go on stage, and uh, we made up a lot of the music. And you're but. not afraid of improvising at all, because no, you've done it even in contests, No, no, correct? all my com competitions were pretty much improvised. You know, that's crazy. That's no, crazy. No, it's, I mean, I don't know, it's just, I, at NEC, like, yeah, that's what everybody was, was Again, doing. you're 12 and you're brilliant. Okay, <laughs> so let's let's look at another piece of tape, and this is, mm -hmm. this is, you're going to describe this to me in a minute after we watch this. Okay. You're just like a super spy, get your guys strategically in place, know the slaves are right, get your cameras looking device, oh super spy, let me back to lay it on the fire, get your hands up mine, ridiculous jealousy. All right, talk about making accordion cool. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's yeah. that is Yasmin. That is Yasmin, yeah. And you have combined forces to do what now? What what is this project? All well, about? yeah, this is uh, a pop music project. That's one of uh, her songs called Jealousy. And where's she from? She is from Tunisia. Okay. Which uh, in North Africa, but she grew up in London, so she has all these different. You met on tour on. somewhere? No, no. She went to NEC as well. We, okay. We met there, and uh, she was there for classical. And I played with her once and taught her a tune, very difficult tune, in about five minutes. And I said, your ears are way too good. You need, your technique's fine. Get out of classical. You need, you need to go in the contemporary department and, and you know, improve your ears more. And uh, she switched, and, and now she plays all kinds of different genres. We do a lot of acoustic gypsy music as well. Um, but you know, the other thing we're trying to do that's more marketable is, is that with pop music, but make it kind of intricate pop music. Well, she's beautiful. And that's <laughs> that awesome. That and you're awesome. you're young and hip. <laughs> and this is the Accent Project, and you have mm. a mission behind this. What's the mission? It's it's just to um, weed out know. garbage. In well, music? yeah. <laughs> Which let's just let's cut to the chase. Let's cut to the chase. <laughs> to the chase. <laughs> yes, I mean, as we were saying, we were talking before the show. That, you know, 50 years ago, this, if you were famous, there was a 95 percent chance you were really good. And today, if you're famous, I feel like it's about a 5% chance that you're actually really good. It's, it's more about the show than it is about how good the music is. You know, Stevie Wonder is a case of someone that is highly respected by musicians and loved by the common people. But how many of those are there? Uh, most that are famous, the music world, like, oh, God, do they even know what a, a G chord is, let alone, you know. So we're trying to create music that you could still hear on the radio, that is still catchy, is still simple, but musicians can listen to it and still, you know, feel like there's a lot in there, that you can't just transcribe the whole song in one listen. So. Where is it that you're going to, you've already made it big, but as Wait, far as, as pop music, is it the accent project that's going to take you in one direction? Is it, is it Corey on his own? <laughs> uh, where do you think you're going to end up? You're only 26 years old. Hmm. Um, we know you're going to be back at the White House playing. <laughs> What's the ultimate goal? I mean, the ultimate goal has always been to you know, bring the accordion back to the forefront, just, just in the way that the, there's so much it can do. And now with this instrument, you know, as when I was playing Get Lucky before, the, you know, it, I am playing everything. A lot of people feel like there's backing tracks, um, especially if I'm, I'm playing, you know, this thing. But they're, they're, it's all, I'm playing everything you see. It's just as the sounds involved with it. Um, so it's, What's it's showing. What's the weirdest sound you can, you, out of this techno box? I mean, you can, uh, if, you know, for people that love guitar, where's the, uh, you can have, like, distorted. I could put all the, some distortion and effects on there. <laughs> Who that. 
needs a band. <laughs> no, so, <laughs> and I got bass here, so you know, gonna be an entire band. What do you hate playing that people ask you to what play? What do? All the time? Well, I mean, what are you? What are you sick of playing? I guess. Uh, Growing up Italian, I love all the old Italian songs, but you know, uh, That's Amore has gotten a bit, you know. Give me a little anyway, since you hate it. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I gotta turn off my reverb here. It is. It is a crowd pleaser. I know. <laughs> you, it's like Havana Nagila for, for exactly. klezmer music. They don't want to do it. I know you, you play classical too. Mm -hmm. um, as you as you move forward and you reinvent mm -hmm. this instrument, right. and I can't wait to see it. You're going to have to come back on when you do <laughs> when that. I have the new one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah when it's, an engineer from Connecticut is actually the guy who's on. Really? So, yeah. I wondered what the connection, connection was. Got some Connecticut connection. Yeah. That. Yeah. yeah. Um, just where, where do you hope you end up? At 26, will you always be playing this? I've seen you play the, the piano yeah, too. Yeah, just I mean, I would think I would always be playing this, um, and you know, but playing with bigger and bigger artists, and just you know, trying. Who's to get the it wish the list on that? The wish list. I mean, I'm I'm working and trying to do something with Lady Gaga. For there's a lot of connections. Smart. Very she's close, big. Right. She's huge. She's very close with her Italian roots. She's very proud of it. Um, parents are great. They're in New York, as people know. Um, and you know she she has that connection to jazz. She was a great jazz singer before she went into the pop. So there's there's some interesting connections there, and always looking for something different. So some crazy. You electric get bored recording. easily. I, I can tell that already. So Lady Gaga, <laughs> who else? Well, I mean, it could be. What would be something from... really weird that you would put your instrument with? Um, a I, band? maybe. I mean. DJs, uh, you think of some massive DJs that when you know, Avicii, they're on stage, maybe. yeah, and they're on stage, and then not only they're doing the computer, then I'm there and I'm playing with mm -hmm. the music, with some of the different electronic sounds. Of course, I can hook this up to a computer and get any sound, and you know, still play because it it's like a MIDI controller basically, with bellows. So. Well, I, I can't tell you what a pleasure it is to meet you and to watch you play <laughs> and you to and much. to see you grow and grow. Mm -hmm. Corey Pesatoro, thank you so much, and come back. Thank you, and I hope to come back. <laughs> Thank you.